Hello, I am Michael Collins and I am the course team leader of A-Level Media Studies here at Long Road Sixth Form College in Cambridge. In this video, I'm going to go through exactly what you need to do on the summer work. So there's four pieces of work that I'd like you to complete over the summer holidays. So let's go through them all. Summer work is an excellent way of proving to your new teachers exactly how hard you're going to work over the course. And if you do it right, it's going to be a lot of fun as well. So let's check out the four tasks that we would like you to complete over the summer holiday. The first task involves analysing adverts. Now, the first task, the first unit that you will be doing at Long Road is going to be involving advertising. So what I'd like you to do is I want you to pick out three adverts from different perfume or fragrance companies. So these might be aimed at male audiences. These might be aimed at female audiences, or in some cases, you also might get unisex perfume adverts. You can find these images in magazines or newspapers. You might want to print out an image online, or if you want to do this digitally, you just need to save the image and place it into a PowerPoint presentation or a Word document or however else that you want to do this. So you're going to analyze these images and you're going to suggest what meanings that they create for their audiences. This process is called textual analysis and basically it's the backbone of the whole of media studies and it's something that we do pretty much every single last lesson. So it's a good idea to get used to this style of analysis very, very quickly. A couple of examples of fragrances you might want to look at are uh, Chanel, which is primarily aimed at women, Jean-Paul Gaultier, which is primarily aimed at men. But if you just want to Google this, just, you know, the names of perfumes or fragrances, I'm sure you'll be able to find loads and hopefully you'll have a couple in your mind already. As you're analysing them, you're going to explain how these adverts attract their target audiences. You might want to stick these images onto a larger piece of paper or card in order to make this possible. But again, you can totally do this digitally in a PowerPoint presentation or a Word document. If you don't have a printer, yeah, just do it digitally again in a PowerPoint presentation. Or uh, alternatively, if you don't have access to a computer or if you just want to do this the old fashioned way, you can just write your analysis on a piece of paper. It might not look as colourful, but it's just as fine. And that's the kind of stuff that we want to see. It's absolutely your choice. Now, when you're analysing these adverts, these are the kind of things that we want you to talk about. So target audience. Who is this advert aimed at? How old are the audience? What gender are they? Are they gay or are they straight? Now that's something which is really, really important for advertisers to consider. What kind of job do they work in? Which can also allow advertisers to work out how expensive to make the brands as well. Audience appeal. What specifically might interest the audience or give the audience pleasure? How is the target audience attracted? So if the perfume is aimed at a woman, well then how do you know that this is appealing to a predominantly female audience rather than a stereotypical masculine audience? Lexis is a new media studies term, but all it means is language. Lexis is just what language, in this case, the advert uses. So why has the producer of the advert picked these words in particular? particular. Why is this language being used? Colour is extremely important for advertising. So what colours have been chosen and why? What mood has been created and what atmosphere does the selection of colours create? We also need to consider the unique selling point or the USP. You can't just say, here's a perfume, it smells nice. You need to basically advertise it, you need to market it, and you need to say that this is different from everything else in the market. So what is the most striking and unique thing about this advert? And what is the thing which makes it different from every other advert? The slogan is also really important. Does the advert use a slogan or a catchphrase? And if it does, then what does it say about the product? And does this tell you anything more about audience appeal? Does this tell you who this advert is targeting specifically? Finally, font. What kind of font is used in the advert's text? And why has this font been used instead of any other kind of font? Remember, when it comes to making any kind of media product, nothing is left to chance. And even something as straightforward as the font has been selected for a reason. After you've finished analysing your adverts, it's time to get creative and you are going to be making an advert for a fragrance which appeals to a specific audience. Now, ideally, we want to display this work when you come. 
So we would like to stick them all up in the classroom and this usually forms a nice colourful display at the start of the year. So please, if possible, could you make it large? So we're going to suggest A3. So if you've got any A3 paper hanging around, that's fantastic. If you've only got smaller paper, that's absolutely fine. I would like you to include everything that you've explored in the texture analysis task. So everything including Lexis, including fonts, including colour, including a target audience. You can create your draft advert in any way that you choose. So you could just do it in pencil and pen if you don't have any colours. You could do it in full colour on a nice large piece of A3. That would be lovely, thank you. You could create a collage of images which are found in magazines. So that's another thing. If you've got any magazines around the house, why not cut them up? Obviously ask for your parents' permission first. Um, you can also do this digitally if you have the software to do so. So for example, there's Photoshop, um, if you've got access to that. There's also another programme called GIMP. Uh, unfortunately named GIMP, which is essentially like a free version of Photoshop. Uh, I'll definitely check that one out. However, there's also a program on every Windows computer called MS Paint, which is freely available and you could absolutely use that as well. You could also use any combination of all these different elements in order to create your advert. Once you've done that and it's nice and colourful and you've got something which, you know, you'll be proud to have stuck up on the wall at Long Road, it's time to move on to task three, which is reviewing your favorite media products. So this is a fun one. So what I'd like to do first of all, is I'd like to pick any three of any of the following forms of media. We've got radio, TV, film, video games, websites, newspapers, adverts, magazines, and or music videos. You've got a lot of freedom in this. If you're particularly into radio, for example, you can pick three different radio shows, or maybe you're into video games and films. So you might decide to pick two video games and one film. It is completely up to you what format you decide to do this in. Now, for each of the films or TV shows or music videos or magazines or adverts or newspapers or websites or radio or TV or films, or I think I said some of them twice, for each of them, I would like you to write a short but informative review of each of these products. So you've got to pick three things that you are very, very enthusiastic about. And if you do, it's going to make this task so much easier and probably loads more fun as well. So your reviews should not be any longer than 500 words. I'm not going to get annoyed if you write something which is more than 500 words, but we're looking at about 1,500 words worth of writing in total. Um, if you want to do something slightly different, you could just pick one, for example, film, let's just say your favourite film of all time, and you can write a 1,500 word review of this one media product. So that's going to be pretty big. That's going to be at least three sides of A4. Once more, it can be absolutely anything. It could be a film or TV show or music video or video game or whatever from any era, from any time. It doesn't have to be popular. It could be very, very new or very, very old. It is totally up to you. Now, what kinds of things should you be talking about in your review? Well, here's a few tips for you. First of all, make sure your response is personal. Talk about how it affects you personally and also talk about how it affects you emotionally as well. This is really, really important because otherwise your review might just be a little bit boring if you're just talking about it in an objective and cold way. Talk about how it affects you. Start off by writing a brief paragraph at the start, which gives a bit of contextual information or background information about the product. So if you picked a film, who directed it? What year did it come out in? And what country was it made in? Briefly describe the main plot points. Now, this is if this is appropriate. If you've picked an advert, this is probably not going to be appropriate. But regardless, please don't spoil anything for the audience. I don't want to have a film I haven't seen yet spoiled. Finally, you may wish to make reference to other things that the creator of your products has made. So this might require some research. How does it compare? So again, if you picked a film, what else has the director made? If you picked a music video, well, what other music videos has the musical artist made? Finally, and this is your final task, and this one's a bit of an open-ended task. So once you've done everything else to an excellent level, and that should take you quite a few hours, so don't expect to get this done in one day by any stretch of the imagination, I would like you to check out the A-Level Media Studies blog at lr-media.blogspot.com.
So this is the blog that you will be using on a day-to-day -day basis when you study A-level media studies at Long Rose. It covers everything in the course and there's loads and loads of different resources and different things for you to look at. For example, thinking way ahead, there's examples of past papers and exemplar answers. There's ex explanations of every single last theorist that you're going to be looking at. There's also every single last PowerPoint um, that you will be looking at over the year. So you can look ahead or if you miss a lesson for whatever reason, you can also use these to catch up. Um, there are descriptions of everything that we study. There are many, many different revision resources and there's even a full length revision guide, which I wrote myself as well. Uh, so you can check that out. Probably most excitingly for you guys, uh, I've also finally started making a YouTube channel as well so you can find this by clicking on the media focus link on the blog and you can start to watch some of my lessons in video format as well which will give you a really really good indication of what learning media at long road is going to be like so check this stuff out so hopefully this has answered any questions that you might have had about the summer work and if you do have any additional questions do feel free to email me and to get in contact with me and hopefully I can help you out with any issues you might be having. Just do remember the summer work has been uh, made in order that you can complete it in any way that you want. So if you see something in the summer work and you think well I can't quite do that, I don't have the resources to do that, do remember it's extremely flexible and you can take it on however you one. So please just give it your best and preferably if you can make something lovely and colourful that we can stick up that would be absolutely wonderful. Have a wonderful summer and we can't wait to see you in September.